Hey everyone, welcome to DFS Coach Talk. I am Omaha Joe. Alongside me is Josh Crash Davis. Right off the bat, you're probably a little thrown. We're missing our man, Andrew Hansen. Josh and I here in the booth today. Andrew's out there on a family vacation, traded the main weather in for some Florida weather. Uh, but Josh, I feel good for this week seven, man. How are you feeling? Yeah, I'm feeling really good about it. You know, we had a good week last week and had a, had a really good night last night, especially Andrew. Um, yeah. Speaking of Andrew. So, <laughs> um, yeah, so, so in fact, why don't you, uh, for those who don't know, let our viewers know a little bit about what happened last night. Yeah, I, I like that you threw it over to me as the Broncos fan to talk about our loss. Josh, I, I appreciate that. Um, yeah, last night, Andrew had a big win over there on DraftKings. Um, he actually took down the Millie Maker in $8,000 lineup. Befuddled me because he had both Denver running backs, Javante right. Williams and Melvin Gordon in the lineup. Um, but he did it over there, and that was phenomenal. Can't speak much on how the Broncos did. Um, but yeah, he did it over there. We actually posted that winner on our Twitter, um, DFS Coach Talk. So, I mean, what a way to kick off week seven here in NFL. Yeah, absolutely, man. Absolutely. Sweet. Well, Josh, let's jump into it here uh, real quick. We should note that a like and a subscribe goes a long way here on our podcast. Um, I actually ran my notes here for the podcast by Andrew Hansen. Um, so if you're listening in, uh, you know that they were approved um and looked over um by the main man there awesome um josh let's jump into these quarterbacks R right off the bat um i'm loving patrick mahomes in this in this yeah. matchup against the titans on DraftKings, he's 8400 on fanduel he's looking at 8800 it's the highest game total it's the third most implied points um, of course, the Chiefs are coming off a big game. The Titans are coming off a big game against the Bull, uh, against the Bills. Um, the Chiefs right now, they're throwing the ball more than any other NFL team in a close game when it's within three points. And I expect nothing different in this game. I think it's going to be an absolute shootout. It's a it's a 57 and a mm -hmm. half over under. The Tennessee Titans defense ranks second to worst in fantasy football points allowed to quarterbacks. And the, over there on PFF, um, the Chiefs are looking at the fourth best pass event, pass advantage here. Chief, yeah. Mahomes has been the number one quarterback here throughout the weeks. I don't think that's going to change. I think he's in a smash spot, little chalky, obviously. Everyone loves to go to a stack mm -hmm. here with Mahomes and his pass catchers. But I really like Patrick Josh. That's probably the first QB I'm going to look at. Yeah, I definitely like Mahomes too. He was the first quarterback that I put in my um, my top plays this week. So we're on the same page there for sure. For me, I'm going to be looking at just paying down just a little bit, um, going with the hometown team here, going with Aaron Rodgers. <laughs> um, 7,500 on DraftKings. You know, on paper, he probably has the best matchup this week as Washington has allowed the most fantasy points to quarterbacks. Um, one thing I like about Aaron Rodgers is what we saw last week. He was able to score over uh, 23 fantasy points against Chicago, and he threw for less than 200 yards. Um, which normally when you throw for less than 200 yards, it's going to be pretty hard to get over 23. But the Packers right. offense is a little bit more creative this week in the red zone, and, and he showed that he still has ability to beat the defense with his scrambling uh, when he needs to. Um, and so I, I look for him to have a bigger week through the air this week and for Green Bay to continue to be more creative in the red zone, which is going to open up opportunities for the other weapons outside of Devontae again, um, looking for Randall Cobb, Alan Lazard, Robert Tunyon, you know, those guys. So Josh, I'm su I'm surprised you didn't open up the podcast screaming. I own you to all our bears fans. <laughs> listening. <still> own you. <laughs> that was crazy. Yeah. Um, and then Cole Komet comes out, um, and then interview afterwards, he goes, he's not wrong. Um, yeah. pretty funny stuff over there. And I, I like mm -hmm. Aaron Rodgers as well. This Washington secondary has just been scorched. Um, mm -hmm. you know, they get obviously against the chiefs, the chiefs are good passing offense, but like this Washington yeah. secondary is not, what we expected it to be. So I love that play. Um, do you have, do you have a quarterback that you like down there in the middle tier? Yeah. So for in the middle tier, I am looking at um, Ryan Tannehill, you know, he he's, He's another really good matchup. Um, Kansas City's allowed the second most fantasy points to quarterbacks. And, um, you know, he's kind of had a little bit of a down year this year so far. 
but this is actually the best matchup he's had this year. And the Chiefs, you know, I think they're going to try and stack the box against Henry, just do everything they possibly can to try and stop him um, and just kind of hope and pray it works, I guess. But I think that's going to open up some things for the passing game. It's going to be probably, like you were saying earlier, one of the highest in, or the highest implied total on the slate. So it's going to be a shootout, you know, and so they're going to try and keep pace with Kansas City. And obviously the quickest way to do that is through the air. Um, unless Henry breaks another 80 yard touchdown run, but you know, we can't yeah. count on that. <laughs> yeah. Right. I also think just like with how high scoring this game is, you can get to both the passing and rushing side of this game. Yeah. I mean, you can have AJ Brown or the, you know, wide receivers for two touchdowns. You could have Henry for two touchdowns and Tannehill. Yeah. This is like probably the first game he's had where he can absolutely just break out here. He was going up against right. a tough Bills defense. He honestly hasn't looked like what I expected him to look like, but if there's a matchup for Tannehill to break out of his shell, this would be it. Um, yeah. Absolutely. So I, I'll go with the, I'll go with the lower price guy as well. I like Matt Ryan here versus the Miami Dolphins. It's the fifth highest game total and the ninth most implied points. So it's not up there in like the top five or the top three. However, Atlanta has been bleeding bleed in mm -hmm. yards and, and same with Miami. I mean, Tom Brady came in through for 342 yards yeah. uh, or sorry, 411 and five mm -hmm. touchdowns versus um, a Miami. And Matt Ryan here has actually been a lot better in just these last two games against Washington and the jets. Um, his average QB rating on PFF has been a 90. Um, he's actually starting to look like the pass funnel offense that we saw from, from the line of Falcons that we expected um, in those first three weeks, he had an average QB rating around 60. Um, but yeah. he just just came off a bye game before that. He I like that he threw for over 300 yards. He threw for 342 and two touchdowns versus those Jets. Um, so I think if you're going to go a lower price guy, and we'll get there of who we kind of like to pair Matt Ryan up with. Yeah. Um, but I think Matt Ryan's solid here. Yeah. Yeah. I definitely like Matt Ryan. Um, and I, and I think before I before I get uh, onto the next, onto the halfbacks. I do want to touch. Um, I think we may have looked over Matthew Stafford. Um, he's 7,100 on DraftKings, going to be facing his old team, of course, this week. And I think as much as he's trying to downplay it, he's going to have a point to prove against his former employer. Um, and, you know, they're, they're ranked 17th in fantasy points allowed to quarterbacks, which is kind of in the middle of the pack, but they have some of the worst uh, cornerback matchups, according to Pro Football Focus. And Cooper Cup, for example, has the highest rated matchup against all defenders on the slate at 94.6 against A.J. Parker. So I think Stafford's going to hook up with him a lot this week. And um, Detroit's allowing about 252 passing yards per game. And I think Stafford's going to go well over that number this week. So, Yeah, I like what you said there about the narrative, um, except I don't know if Stafford's necessarily upset. He might be happy Detroit let Maybe him go. Happy, yeah. <laughs> right. But, you know, Goff, even on the other side, it's at least something that they've circled True. on the calendar as a matchup that they're looking yeah. forward to. But I agree. Um, this Lions defense, This here's just a couple stats I have on them. They rank last in explosive pass play rate allowed their last in yards per attempt their last in pass rating and their first in the deep ball rate face against qbs and you know stafford's mm -hmm. been airing it out to cup van yes. jefferson deshaun jackson um it's the second highest game total and it's the number one at implied points and that is with about a high spread i mean that just goes to show what yeah. you think this rams offense is going to do um right so yeah stafford's had a phenomenal season thus far 16 touchdowns four interceptions Love that call. Awesome, Josh. Well, we hit on the QBs here. You want to kick us off uh, with the running backs? Yeah, so we're going to start at the top. This is the most obvious play on the slate, I think. But Derrick Henry, 9,200 on DraftKings. Um, you know, after seeing what Henry was able to do against the Bills last week, the number one, you know, supposedly the number one defense against halfbacks, there's really not any matchup that we have to be afraid of using Derrick Henry in, you know? Especially, um, not, especially not this one. Yeah, especially not this one, but it's really just a matter now of whether we want to pay the high price for him or if we want to try and get contrarian and avoid, you know, the high ownership pretty much every week is what we're going to be looking at the rest of the year. Um, but, you know, he's just simply the best skill position player in fantasy right now. There's really not any reason, you know, to not to play him um, outside of, like I said, just trying to be contrarian. And this week he's going up against Kansas City, who ranks 24th um, in fantasy points allowed to halfbacks. And this game script is going to be perfect for him because even if 
they're airing it out, you know, between the twenties, he's still going to see a ton of red zone opportunities. So definitely yeah. like Derek Henry, it's just a matter of making it work with all the salary and the rest of your lineup. Yeah. That's the tough part, right? He's 9,200 on DraftKings. He's 11,000 on FanDuel, yeah. but yet I, I still love him because the damage he did to the bills yeah. last, last game, he did that on 20 attempts rushing. I know. Absolutely ridiculous. And I saw an even more ridiculous stat here. In yards per game so far, Derrick Henry's first and Joe Mixon is second. And Joe Mixon is closer to the running back 27 than he is to Derrick Henry in yards. <laughs> just, wow. just bonkers. Great. And Derrick Henry is having him an all-star season. Um, and the Titans have a 62% run advantage here on the mm-hmm. ground. I, I think – this just goes to show how much we're going to love this game here with the Chiefs and Titans. Um, yeah. So can we get there to Derrick Henry? I hope so in cash, um, but what a play. Um, yeah, but- I think – go ahead. No, no. Uh, okay. hey, go for I was going to say, I think that we've got a value play that we're going to give later on that's going to help everybody get there. So Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. And I – and I'll, I'll toss this in there too. We've been talking before the podcast and there's a couple other value plays. Uh, we'll give out and some that we're just going to hold on to our members. So right. that's also a value of just joining here in our discord, which we'll, we'll get to our full offerings, but we'll definitely be handing out some values here to get to Derrick Henry. Yeah, absolutely. Awesome. So who are you looking for your top running or halfback? Yeah. Yeah. So it's actually not a high, super high price guy. He's a DK 6,600 FanDuel 8,000. I love Daryl Henderson here versus mm. the Lions. The Lions yeah. have allowed the second most fantasy points to running back. Um, Daryl Henderson actually on the whole slate has the highest projection above salary expectations. Number one, about a 4.48 point spread. Um, he's played 81% of the snaps and 80% of the routes in week six. You know, you have Sony Michelle mixing it up, but it is not a split backfield. It's something like you've seen in Denver. Um, yeah. it is, it's an 80 to 20 split. Um, last game, he had 21 attempts for 78 yards versus the Giants in a touchdown. I Again, I mentioned Matt Stafford. I mentioned like how I used to throw it out. But Daryl Henderson is logging rushing attempts. He's logging passing attempts. He's going to be involved, and he's that number one back against a really poor Lions defense. So I actually yeah. I think it's really hard to get away from Daryl Henderson here. Yeah, I really like Daryl Henderson. I liked him last week. Um, I think that – I do have I do have him listed here as one of my plays myself, and he has no less than 15 fantasy points in any game this year. You know, so I think that's just a huge um, factor that you want to consider when you're looking at a cash play. I mean, that's as safe as it gets. You know, 15 Absolutely. fantasy points a game. You know, at that price, especially. So, definitely a big fan of Daryl Henderson this year. Um, for me, another option that I've looked at for this week is Aaron Jones, again, going with the home team, uh, yep. going up against, you know, the last three weeks he's gone against Cincinnati, Pittsburgh, and Chicago, three top 10 defenses against the run. Mm-hmm. Um, this week he's going up against Washington, which is 22nd in fantasy points allowed to running backs. And he's also been involved in the passing game, seeing four targets per game. So, through the pass, you know, through the passing game and the, and the running game with a, a lesser defensive line and linebackers that he's, he's going to be going up against than he has been lately. I think it opens up for a big week. And um, obviously I'm hoping for a, for a big, you know, margin of victory for Green Bay. So if that happens, that's going to open up more curious for him too. So, yeah, I mean, Aaron Jones, actually, let's, let's relate it back here. He had that massive game against the Lions with all those yeah. passing touchdowns. And that's actually another reason I like Daryl Henderson. Oh um, yeah, for the, for the yeah. damage for the damage Aaron Jones did, um, because they they play a similar game and um and Joe Mixon last week. Yep, absolutely. Actually, the Lions have led up the most passing touchdowns to running backs here, um, on the season with six. So I I think you got to hammer the Lions. I know that wasn't the point you made about Aaron Jones, but Aaron Jones is sneaky talented, and I think his ownership might fall off because yeah. of those tough matchups he's had. Um, but I would not count him out for sure. Um, yeah. great. Middle of the pack here, um, I, I like Leonard Fournette versus the Bears. Of course, he's mm-hmm. coming off of a two-touchdown performance there on Thursday Night Football. Um, but he is logging in that backfield uh, about 69% of the rushing attempts, um, and his routes per play are about 50%. Um, so the Bucks are having a good opportunity to not have to go to Jones. Of course, Giovanni Bernard's there for third down. But how the Bucks are working, they are getting to a second and two or a second and one where it's not like these chunk plays on third down 
that's kind of where I see Leonard Fournette's value is they're just throwing him in there for these two yard mm-hmm. runs. And then he breaks them off and he has a great game, but that's just kudos to how this Buccaneers offense works of how they're moving down the field. And you have these short second down plays where you're going to let that go to Leonard Fournette. So got to mention Leonard Fournette there. He's very middle of the pack, but uh, I'll mention a, a value running back here and it's Devonte Booker here versus the Pat versus the Panthers. Um, he, he's Devonte Booker is going to be the every down back in, in for the Giants offense. And of course there was that blowout last week um, against the Rams. I mean, he wasn't even on the field in the fourth quarter, um, right. which I think is going to drive his ownership down. People might be a little off Devonte Booker, but that, I mean, that was purely just for a blowout reason. And you're not going to risk Booker when you already have Barkley out. Um, right. And the Panthers actually, Joss in their last three games, they've given up 502 yards to running mm. backs over these last three. So on paper, they look like a really good run defense, um, but they also started off the week, the the season hot with their first three opponents, like Ty Johnson and, and Michael Carter for running backs, not really a formidable force. I will not say Devontae Booker um, is a, you know, a top tier running back, but he's, mm-hmm. I think he is a little bit better there and he's going to be getting all the volume in a giants team. That's really beat up. So yeah, for his type of price, DraftKings, 5,500, FanDuel, 5,800, and the amount of volume that Devontae Booker is going to get for this Giants team, I think you definitely have to take a look at him. Yeah, no, I, I, I definitely agree. Um, for me, I'm going to be looking at, and I think he's going to end up being a little bit more chalky by the end of the week, but um, by Sunday, I mean, so Devontae Freeman, he's 4,400 on DraftKings. Latavius Murray was ruled out today, which is going to open up the door for him to see more carries against Cincinnati. It doesn't really seem to be like the best matchup, as I was mentioning earlier, that Cincinnati has been pretty good against the run. But I think at his high ownership, you know, it's a price that that we are going to be willing to pay, especially to try and pair him up with Derrick Henry uh, in our cash games. So, you know, that's that's one of the – I mentioned earlier about value plays. He's one of the guys that I'm looking at to pair up to try and, you know, put Derrick Henry in, in my cash game. So Devontae yeah. Freeman is going to be my value running back. Love it, man. Love it. Sweet. Josh, well, before we head on to the wide receivers, uh, we'll take a pause here just to give our listeners um, a little update here on what we're doing at DFS Coach Talk. Of course, we have all videos. We have NBA seven days a week on YouTube. We do the Thursday night main slate, um, month, primetime games for football. You know, you've been doing MLB um podcast as well as pga we've got it all we keep this all in front of the paywall um which we love we love listening to you guys in the comments and what you got to say uh, but you sh- should definitely look to joining us at dfscoachdoc.com because that's where you're going to get those winnings that's where you're going to align with andrew for a big night or align with yeah. us here um we give out full fan duel lineups uh we give out a DraftKings clipboard as well as yahoo lineups and we have a various amount of memberships you know, you can do a three-day pass for $10. Uh, you could do a five-day pass for $19. A lot of people have been taking advantage of that for the Thursday night football to Monday night football, which has just been fantastic. Um, and, yeah, we're out here winning. Um, coaches fired up for NBA. When you do join us, you get all sports. It's not just one specifically. Um, so, yeah, check us out at DFSCoachDoc.com. Check us out on Twitter at DFSCoachDoc um, and come join the action. Josh, got anything to add? Um, no, I mean, like you said, we've, we've been on, on a hot streak, especially on our Thursday night games. We've, mm-hmm. we've really been crushing those. Um, Andrew's put up some, some really, you know, good lineups for, for our members. Um, yeah. and, um, and you guys both, you know, you're both crushing it. So, um, absolutely. Awesome. Josh, we'll, we'll jump into the receivers here. Um, and we'll go down the list. Um, you kind of already mentioned it, um, but we both, I know like Cooper cup here, um, mm-hmm. he had an insane outburst of a 40% target share in week yeah. six, week six against the giants. I mean, he's tied for N- the NFL in receptions 46. He has the second most yards of any receiver in the league. He is tied for the first with seven touchdown passes. The volume that Cooper cup is receiving here is insane. And even though he's a high price tag, DraftKings 8,400 FanDuel 8,800, he is already expected um, to pr- to perform out of his salary expectations. He's the number nine for PFF. He, his price keeps going up, and Cooper Cup yeah. keeps smashing it. And I love that Stafford, when he was in Detroit, he always had this Calvin Johnson, you know, Megatron connection, always fed him. And Cooper Cup looks like that guy in L.A. So I know 
it's hard to sustain. I don't, you can't sustain a 40% target share, but Cooper Cup's mm-hmm. going to get a lot of action. And we've already talked about how much we love this game and um, the Lions defense going against them. So uh, my first guy on the board for the receivers here is going to be Cooper Cup. Yeah. Yeah. Definitely like Cooper Cup. I mentioned last week how he had kind of fallen off there for a little while and how I felt like he was going to have a big bounce back game. And he did. And, um, you know, he hasn't seen less than 10 targets a game. You know, so he's just right. he's got 68 targets on the year, no less than 10 in any game. And uh, he's the highest protected scoring wide receiver by pro football focus. And for good reason, for sure. Um, and right just above him is Devontae Adams, my pick. I don't know what happened this week. I just went all Green Bay, it seems like. But <laughs> um, I, I, I do obviously like Devontae Adams. He's kind of been rotating his big games this year. So last week he had a little bit of a down game. So that would put him on track to have a big game this week. It's kind of what I'm thinking here. Um, going up against Washington defense, they've allowed the second most fantasy points to wide receivers. He's projected to line up against Benjamin St. Just, who he has a 94.5 matchup advantage against, according to Pro Football sure. Focus, and is the third highest projected um, wide receiver on the slate. So Devontae Adams is my wide receiver pick number one. Josh, I don't, I don't blame you for wanting to get to these Packers guys. Yeah. Um, I have another one to share with you later, which I'm sure you'll enjoy. Um, but no, it's just this Washington sure. defense is – they were supposed to be really good. They came to the season hot. They had an excellent 2020, but they have really dropped off. Um, yeah. I mean, if you just go back to like week two with the Giants up against them and Daniel Jones had himself a day, um, mm-hmm. you know, it, it is it, it's a good target. And I just – I don't blame you for going there. And I love Devontae Adams here. One of my top guys. Um, so, uh, we'll, we'll go down a little bit, um, here to, I like AJ Brown here versus the chiefs, mm-hmm. another Titan here on DraftKings, He's 6,300 on FanDuel. He's 7,000. The reason that I do like AJ Brown and it's his performance hasn't been there in the past weeks. Of course he was battling an injury, came back, but Julio Jones is battling a hamstring injury this week. Um, and mm-hmm. at the moment he's questionable. I personally don't see him as, as slotting up. Um, we're suiting yeah. up for this game. And then outside in that West in that wide receiver room, you got AJ Brown, then you got Westbrook, and then you got Josh Reynolds and a couple other folks. So I just imagine AJ Brown is going to get an insane target share. I mean, he owns a commanding 31% target share since returning from injury. Um, and mm-hmm. he gets a tee off against this atrocious Kansas City Chiefs defense. Um, it, I, he has the third best wide receiver and cornerback matchup here. Um, so yeah, if Julio Jones is out, I really like AJ Brown purely just because of the target share he's going to be getting. Um, and what's really funny is I guess he was battling food poisoning last mm-hmm. week, um, from a Chipotle burrito. Um, yes. so, so maybe that threw him off a bit, but, um, he's hundred percent to go for this game. Couldn't be a better matchup. Um, Josh, it seems like we're pretty aligned with the games we want to target here on the slate, but I think AJ Brown yes. could have a really good game. Really good day. Yeah, I mean, yeah, for sure. I like, you know, I, I mentioned Ryan Tannehill earlier, and obviously he's going to be throwing to somebody. So obviously AJ Brown would be that top option. So definitely, definitely like AJ Brown. And he had, especially in the second half, I'm wanting to say um, last week, he had a, you know, pretty good success against Buffalo. He, he was getting mm-hmm. some targets there. So absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. Jo- Josh, who are you uh, liking down there in the middle tier for receivers? For the middle tier, I'm looking at Calvin Ridley. Um, he's yep. 6,600 on DraftKings. You know, he's he's been out since week four, so his ownership is probably going to be down a little bit. I think people might have forgot about him a little bit. But if you're going to be in your tournaments, you're looking to pay down from, you know, the Devontae Adams, Tyree Kills, Cooper Cups of the world. Um, he's going to be going up against the Miami defense. It's allowed the third most fantasy points to wide receivers. He's seen double-digit targets in each of his starts this season. And uh, Pro Football Focus has him projected as the fourth highest scoring wide receiver this week. And he's a seventh uh, priced. So there's six wide receivers priced above him on DraftKings. Yeah, Josh, I think it's absolutely absurd that I asked you for a mid-tier wide receiver and you give me Ridley because he is just priced way down from what we expect him to be. Um, Mm -hmm. His DraftKings price is just criminal. His FanDuel price is 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 decent, but it's still low for, for his yeah. production. I mean, he's been slow out of the gate, but he has a top 10 target rate per route. It's about 26%, and he's mm-hmm. fourth in expected fantasy points per game. Um, big performances are to come for Ridley. They haven't come yet because I Cordell Patterson's just been insane yeah. um, catching right. some of those. But 
I mean, the Miami Dolphins have allowed the third most fantasy points to wide receivers this season. Um, and I think this is where really can break out. And I want to be there when he has his big game. Um, he has the number five um, projected over salary expectations. He ranks ninth in the NFL and targets per route. Um, you just got to love Ridley here. I love that call. Yeah, definitely. Absolutely. Absolutely. Cool. Well, jo- Josh, I teased it a little bit. Um, my yeah. value receiver here is Alan Lazard. Um, if you've been listening to the podcast, you knew I went to Iowa State. Um, mm-hmm. That's where Lazard went to college. Got to mm-hmm. love him. Um, but he, I mean, he's the number two receiver right now in Green Bay. Yeah. Um, and, and we're going to keep talking about this Washington defense. But Alan Lazard has run a route on at least 80% of the drop, drop backs in each of the past three games. And he's hitting above 90% in two of those matchups for drop backs. Mm-hmm. Just purely for routes run, Lazard is there, and he's a big he's a big guy. He is. He's he's a big receiver. Um, he's very active. He can get up for some high throws with the type of volume that he can expect and just the targets. I mean, his price mm-hmm. is is on the value side. It's on the lower side. So I gotta love Alan Lazard here. I think if you can't pay up for some of those big Packer guys like a Devonte Adams or Aaron Jones, as much as we love them, I think you gotta get some sort of um, look to this game and Alan Lazard might be it. Yeah. Last week. I mean, you know, the, the, the bears were trying to double team Devonte, And so that right. obviously created a problem because, you know, they just want to keep feeding Devonte as much as they can. So it really opened up some opportunities for Lazard. And, and then they even got creative with that fake, you know, that little fake <laughs> shovel pass that they came up with there in the Kansas City Chief special. Yeah. Um, yep. the line. I mean, that was pretty sick. I, I love that play call. So you could see him doing something like that. You could see him getting a you know ball thrown up to him in the corner of the end zone. I mean, there's just a lot of yeah. opportunity for Lazard with the defenses focusing on Adams like they are. So Agreed. Um, so that would be the flip side of, of my Adams pick is that Lazard could have a big day if they shut they try to shut down Devontae. Um, so, so for my value play, I'm looking at Darnell Mooney. He's 4,600 on DraftKings. Um, he's pretty much if if Allen Robinson is out, which he's questionable right now, he's pretty much the guy for Justin Fields. And um, I mean, Justin Fields hasn't been you know putting up big numbers or anything, but if you watch the game, he's putting some passes on the money. He really is. Yeah. And the game last week, I mean, if you watch that game he's putting some passes right on the money. And I think that as he gets more comfortable in the offense, it's really going to open up for him. And Tampa's allowed the fifth most fantasy points to quarterbacks. And Mooney's been up against three top 10 pass defenses in his last three games. So I feel like this is going to be a really good matchup for him. Oh, Josh lost you there, but I'll I'll add on there because I also like Darnell Mooney. Um, I love the position he's in Tampa Bay has some of the most zone defense heavy um, zone defense. They're basically averaging 75% of their defensive coverage is in the zone. And here's yeah. a little stat here from Mooney. His receiving grade jumps from a 61.7 in man coverage to a 74.4 against the wow. zone defense. So I, I love what you said there is if, if Alan Robinson is out, I think Mooney mm-hmm. is a great play. Um, I don't think they're going to be able to run – um with herbert no. here with the bears right it's a, to yeah. attack the bucks secondary okay. and if robinson is out love mooney but also just the covers that he's going to be in um mooney looks like a great value so love that mm-hmm. totally agree and richard sherman was ruled out today too so that also helps so yeah absolutely absolutely cool um so we're coming near the end here uh mm. we'll go over to the tight ends um now josh we we're talking before the podcast we'll mention it here you Neither you nor I are a big fan of paying up huge for a tight end. Just as right. far as just as far as ceilings go, it's a yeah. lot easier to get to a middle tier to a low tier. But if you got to pay up, you're going to pay up for Travis Kelsey yeah. because he he does have that high ceiling. Um, he's a little questionable with a neck injury here versus the Titans, but he's the sixth highest projected uh, roster percentage, and he's projected as the second highest among tight ends. Um, it is the highest scoring match of, of the weekend, as we've been talking about. So if you're going to mm-hmm. pair uh, Patrick Mahomes here, you can look to Tyreek Hill. You can look to Travis Kelsey. Um, you can look value for um, Hardman or someone. Yeah. But um, Kelsey just looks really solid here into the Titans. Again, the Titans defense is not good. Um, and if you're going to have to pay up somewhere, I would pay up for Travis Kelsey. 
Yeah, I, I totally agree. And if, if Tyree Kill, for whatever reason, doesn't play, I mean, that's just going to make him the number one option, obviously. So right. it's definitely going to put Kelsey way higher up in, in the play chart. So, Absolutely. Absolutely. Jo- Josh, are you looking at a high tier tight end or are you going middle of the road? I'm actually going with some more value. I'm looking at great. I'm going right back to Hunter Henry. Actually, I, I've been playing him last two weeks and he hasn't let me down. So I'm going right back to him. 4,100 on DraftKings. He's found the end zone the last three games um, and just over 4K on DraftKings at 4,100. Really good matchup against the Jets, who are 23rd in fantasy points allowed to tight ends. And he's kind of become has kind of become Mac Jones' favorite option in the red zone lately. So I'm definitely looking for Hunter Henry to get us another touchdown this week. I mean, absolutely. We Josh, we came into the season thinking Johnny Smith and Hunter Henry were going to be split in tight end routes and targets right. here. No, it's the Hunter Henry show. He he definitely separated himself as yeah. the tight end there. Um, and he, you're right. He is becoming one of Mac Jones' favorite, favorite targets in that offense. Um, that's great. So I, I'll go middle of the road here too. I'll go to – the lonely Eagles tight end, Dallas Goddard, um, as Zach Ertz has gone over to the Cardinals. Um, but this is a game we haven't talked about yet. The Eagles are facing mm-hmm. the Raiders um, in this one. Um, on DraftKings, Goddard is about 4,600. FanDuel is 5,900. And the Raiders have actually been the worst team against tight ends over the last four weeks, about giving up 17.6 um, mm. fancy points. Fan had a big game, uh, nine receptions from 97 yards. Um, and actually, this is uh, I'm going back to some of these zone and man to man stats here. But Las Vegas plays zone on 76% of its coverage snaps. And so far this season, Goddard has caught all 10 passes thrown his way against zone defenses for 150 yards and seven touchdowns. Mm. Nice. Now, I, sorry, I'll, I'll give some I'll give some preface to that. I don't think it's this season. That was in 2020. Um, I misspoke, but. Th- Goddard feeds off of these zone defenses, and he's yes. the only one in this backfield. I mean, Ertz, when Goddard was out, Ertz ran a route on a on 74% of the team's dropbacks and played an 88% snap and the team's lost to Tampa Bay in week six. But that's what you can expect out of Goddard. That's the production you right. can expect here. And Ertz was taking mm-hmm. that away from when they were in Philadelphia. Great move, by the way, to put put yeah. Ertz to, to the Cardinals. And then um, but that's why I love Goddard. He is going to get an insane target share. The Raiders are terrible against tight ends. They play a zone defense. That's where Goddard feasts. Um, I think Jalen Hurts is going to look his way um, if he's not running the ball. So I, I like mm-hmm. Dal- I like Dallas Goddard here. Yeah, that was a real nice uh, segue there, Joe, because I've got Zach Ertz for my tight end. <laughs> no, 3,900 on DraftKings. Um, obviously, like we mentioned, he was recently traded to Arizona, so he's no longer in that tight end split between him and Goddard. Mm-hmm. Um, with Max Williams on the IR, he's the number one option at the position. And I feel like he's going to develop a nice chemistry pretty quick with Kyler Murray. Um, going up against the Houston defense, it's allowed the second most fantasy points to tight end. So Goddard is going up against the ones allowed the most. He's going up against the ones allowed the second most. So two really absolutely. good options there. Yeah. Yep, absolutely. Love Ertz, and I think that really helps out an already stacked Cardinals. I mean, oh, yeah, um, yeah, another definitely. option for Kyler Murray, I mean – it's yeah. pretty, it's pretty great. Um, awesome. So I'll, I'll go as our deep dive here for a tight end. And I like Ricky seal Jones um, here for Washington against the Packers. Um, he's only 3,700 on DraftKings. Um, he's 5,400 on FanDuel. Um, but the, the amount that he's on the field is, is quite bonkers. He's getting 90% snap share in the last three straight in the last three games. And he's caught mm-hmm. 11 of 19 targets for 118 yards and a touchdown. He's, having a 20% target share, which was more than lot more than Logan Thomas, um, yeah. who's on the IR. So, I mean, Ricky Seal Jones is out there for 90% plus of the snaps. Like he he's in a hundred percent of the dropbacks. He's running a route. He, mm-hmm. the volume, I'm, I'm going to stress volume for him at his mm-hmm. price. He, he's always going to be out there on the field. He's going right. to get looks. Um, Green Bay is about average to the tight ends. Um, they're mm-hmm. actually a little better than average. So it's not like, a, a massive um a massive smash spot like we think with goddard or Ertz. um but if you have to go to a value i like seals jones um the washington passing game um is probably gonna be a little more amped for them i mean you're gonna have most likely antonio gibson now and the old jd mckissick back there who is the mm-hmm. passing passing back anyways so yeah. i think i think washington's gonna go to the air and as seals jones has become one of heineke's favorite 
target um, mm-hmm. next to Terry McLaurin. I think Seals Jones would be the Washington player I would go with here, and he could be a good tight end value. Yeah, yeah, I, I, I agree. We've struggled with tight ends at times for sure. I mean, TJ Hawkinson had a pretty good game against us. George Kittle did some stuff. So, yeah, I could see it. Absolutely. Awesome. Josh, last bit here. I will finish up with these defenses. Um, who are you liking? Yeah, so I'm looking at what I think is, is just a mistype, or I don't know what happened on DraftKings. <laughs> uh, $3,100 for the Arizona Cardinals. Yeah. Um, does not make any sense whatsoever. You know, they're the highest – price defense over on FanDuel and almost near the bottom on DraftKings. So um, going up against Houston, they've scored the second fewest points per game at 15.3. They've, they've, um, Arizona has scored the second most fantasy points per game of any defense at 10, you know, fantasy points per game. So this is just a lock and load play, honestly, in, in cash games, but they're really playable in all formats, obviously. Um, just a great matchup for Arizona. I mean, I'm not expecting much from Houston in this game. So yeah, definitely, definitely going to lock them in, in pretty much everything on DraftKings. you got to 3,100 on DraftKings and they're the highest priced defense over there on FanDuel. Uh, an insane matchup for the Cardinals. I personally don't like selling the farm, uh, for a defense. So I like going mm-hmm. a little lower, but with that being said, I mean, on that price on DraftKings, you're not selling the farm for the best defense right. on the main slate. So, yeah. <laughs> gotta love the Cardinals here. Um, I'll, I'll go to a, on the higher end. Um, I like the Buccaneers here playing the Bears. Um, the Buccaneers are priced at 4000 on DraftKings, 4400 on FanDuel. Um, the Bears just – I know they played Green Bay. I know Allen Robinson is kind of getting a little bit better with his, some of these deep routes, but you still have a rookie QB back there with Justin Fields. Yeah. Um, I don't think they're going to be able to run the ball at all. The, I mean, we actually thought the Buccaneers secondary was a little beat up, um, but they came out against the Eagles and they actually did quite well. So, um, mm-hmm. of course, you have Richard Sherman out and and those kind of folks, but I just don't trust the Bears passing game yet. Um, yeah. I actually think, of course, Justin Fields is a running um, quarterback. You had Herbert score that touchdown against the against your Packers exactly. last week. Mm-hmm. So I think the Bears have actually been focusing on the run game. Less on the pass game. Um, yeah. I know we mentioned Darnell Mooney. What a value if Allen Robinson is out because they got to throw it somewhere. But I think For the sure. Buccaneers are in a good spot here. Um, they've really been manhandling teams. Um, and I think they're due for you know a strip fumble, interception. Um, I think it will come their way. So I like the Buccaneers yeah. versus the Bears. Yeah, I when I was looking at the matchups this week, that was one of the first matchups that I looked at because I thought the same thing. The Bears have been trying to, uh, and they've been pretty successful running the ball. Mm-hmm. But they're not going to run the ball in Tampa. They're just not. No. I just can't see that happening. So definitely like the Bucks, uh, especially over on FanDuel. Um, DraftKings has just kind of made it easy for everybody. So it's just yeah. going to be the Cardinals pretty much all across the board. Exactly. Um, but on FanDuel, definitely like the Bucks. Um, and then if you do want to fade Arizona uh, for whatever reason, um, on DraftKings at thirty five hundred is uh, at thirty five hundred just. A little bit more is uh, Carolina's defense. Um, they're going up against a Giants team that's going to be without Saquon Barkley, Kadarius Tony, Kenny Galladay, and then they've got Sterling Shepard, Evan Ingram, Darius Slayton, and John John Ross are all listed as questionable. So um, you might you know want to stay on standby this week because you might get a phone call or something. I mean, I don't know who they're going to run out there. <laughs> so, yeah. Um, <laughs> But they've they've um, Carolina scored eight or more fantasy points in all but one game this year, and um, as we mentioned earlier, even though the Vikings were able to put up a bunch of points and yards, Carolina still had eight fantasy points. So it seems like they're pretty pretty much matchup proof just based on what their defense is producing in turnovers, sacks, you know, that kind of thing. So yeah, I mean, it kind of just goes to show that even on those high scoring games, they're doing something with, like you said, sacks or interceptions. Um, and against this Giants team that's just dismantled, that's why we mm. like Devontae Booker um, because right. he's going to get all that volume. But And that's because there's really no one else to go to on the Giants, True. right? Um, so, yeah. absolutely. Um, I'll, I'll finish it off here with a value defense. Um, I like the New York Jets um, against the Patriots. And the Jets are 2,400 on DraftKings. So, if you want to go even cheaper than the Cardinals. Um, and on FanDuel, they're 3,300. The Jets actually own the third highest pressure rate this season um, against mm-hmm. quarterbacks and opposing offenses. So I, 
it, I guess in just a holistic sense of this Jets Patriots game, I like both defenses. Um, Patriots are obviously a little more expensive. The Jets right. tend to turn it over a lot. Um, so I like the Patriots if you want to go there. Um, but I think the Jets are sneaky. I think they could pop off. I think it's going to be a low scoring game regardless. Um, so if they get a couple sacks in there or interceptions, um, mm-hmm. it's, it's at this point with the Jets, they're still not a good team, but I would like to say that the defense is obviously outperforming the offense a little bit. Um, they kept the Titans in check, obviously with that win. So against the Patriots, Patriots team that's not throwing up a ton of um, a ton of points. I mean, Jacoby Myers right. hasn't even found the end zone yet. Um, I think the Jets are a good value here on defense. So yeah, definitely like it. Awesome, Josh, we did it. Yeah, we we did it without our sen- we did it without our sensei. Um, yeah. it, it feels good, uh, Josh. I think we are very much in line here on what we're thinking and what games we're gonna go after. We're gonna crush it in week seven. Um, mm-hmm. As we mentioned earlier in the podcast. Come join us at DFSCoachTalk.com. Um, join our Discord. It's a great community. We will post stuff out there on Twitter, um, you know, you know, injuries, yeah. our favorite plays. But the most updated information is going to come in our Discord. Mm-hmm. So go check out our memberships. Follow us on Twitter. Again, a like and a subscribe are immensely um, helpful for us. And um, go ahead and comment. Let us know your favorite plays. I know Josh and I are always on YouTube. Um, yeah. if you have any questions, feel free to ask them and shoot this over to us. And, you know, we would love to help Josh. Any last words? No, I think we're going to have a great week seven. Um, looking forward to, to watching all the games and there's just going to be a lot going on this weekend. So a lot to watch. So it's going to be fun. Absolutely. Well, everyone, thank you for listening in here. Um, again, this is Omaha Joe and Josh crash Davis. Um, please listen back. Join us as we look to crush it in DFS.